good kill. Hey guys, how you doing? We're back here again with another video today. I've been doing a lot of videos uh, with the F-14 lately, which usually leads to me throwing a whole lot of Phoenix missiles at some poor guy with just AMRAMs. So today I'm going to give myself a little taste of my own medicine, and we're going to face off against two Iranian F-14s. Me and Master J will be flying the F-18 Hornet, and we're going to be carrying a Spam Ram loadout. Um, so I'm going to see what it feels like to get Phoenix missiles fired at me. It's actually the first time that I'm doing something like that. I'm usually flying the Tomcat and shooting the missiles myself. Um, Alright, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. a little close Jay yeah yeah it was <laughs> kind of scaring me bro <laughs> don't worry I was just try trying to refuel <laughs> <laughs> asking for pre-contact <laughs> <laughs> Okay, contact, flight of two, bearing 264 for 80, Angels 30. Roger, confirm contact. Okay, 
Okay, I have the flight leader locked up. Full burner, breaking left. Roger. Breaking right. Whoever that leader goes after, you go defensive, and the other guy press and kill him. I'll copy. Raj. Heading 330 now. Copy, I'm at 210. Turning back in. Turning back. 42 miles. Roger. Angels 2-8. Copy. 39 miles. I got a lock on the lead. Copy. I'm 36. I think he's on you. He's nose hot on you. Alright. Cranking right. Correcting at you, they fired at me. They fired at me. Roger. Yep, I'm Fox 3. Going defensive. They fired at me too. 24 miles. Fox 3. Going defensive. Fox 3 again. The Fox. Oh! I'm hit! I'm down.
Okay, I'm coming back. <sighs> they just launched at me. I'm defensive. Oh, I'm totally defensive. I got two incoming phoenixes at the very least. I'm gonna see if I can hide behind these mountains. Full burner. Dropping tank. I have visual on missile launch. Oh, it's coming. Oh boy, it's coming. guys so here is our attack view for that little fight um, before we get started I'll tell you a little bit about our tactic that we were going to try to use um, what we we're going to try to do is uh, exploit the limitations of the narrow field of view of the f-14's radar so what I'm talking about is the f-14 has this little radar cone here and the issue with it is that it's very strong at, at distance you know it can see a whole lot of everything because it spreads out nicely but the problem is that up close it's very narrow and what that creates is a, a vulnerability up close for the f-14 so if you can get like say over here the f-14 and you're close right let's say you're within 10 nautical miles the f-14 is going to have trouble seeing that so it's going to require an f uh, the pilot to be very situationally aware to know exactly where to point the nose to get the target so essentially the weakness of the f-14 is that up close it's not that great okay it, it, it's much more vulnerable up close um, in comparison when you look at the f-14 or sorry the f-18 or the f-15 their radar view is much wider up close so it makes it much easier to see targets that are close up and it provides better uh, situational awareness so this is one of the weaknesses of the f-14 right here so what we were going to try to do was break off to one side and me come this way maybe and then have the uh, f-14 leader engage onto one target and then that guy would stay defensive and the other guy would come in and press and hopefully get the kill so that was the idea that's what we were going for we were going to try to spread them out or spread each other out make him pick one and then the other guy kill him. all right pretty basic tactic but you know we thought it would work it didn't work that well all right, so we got our two. The one goes for a pincer, pincer right formation. He's off to the side here, you saw that. And then what happens is me and Master J do our split once we get them on radar. And you can see they did their split long before ours because their radars easily saw us. Now, as we do our split, look at the F-14 leader. you can see he's basically completely committed onto master j here and the two guys are gonna pretty much line up perfectly together so it's a two on two fight which is still good for us um, but what one of the things that they did that i thought was really good which worked out in their favor i guess even though they're just ai is that the the um the the sorry the f-14 leader here when he committed what the hell when he committed, he went for the target that was closer to him, okay, which happens to be Master J. Now, what would have happened if he was positioned over here? So let's say this was the leader here, and he'd made the mistake of going after Master J, he would have left himself an open flank here where I would have engaged him, right? However, what you see going on here is that the leader is pressing Master J, and I'm gonna to try to recommit onto the leader, but there's the wingman who's going to cover the leader. Okay, so it's actually a very nice counter to our tactic. This is most of the reason why it didn't really work out for us right here. So you can see that the F-14 leader is going to commit onto Master J, so you can see I'm turning in once I realize on the radar that he's committed to him. 
and what I do is as he closes on him you can see the wingman is already providing cover for the wingman for the leader All right the wingman has already launched his Phoenix at me now due to my poor situational awareness I wasn't aware of what was going on here I thought the uh, wingman was still significantly further back and I thought I made a mistake with the, the aspect of the leader and I thought that he committed onto Master J and then fired at him and turned his nose on me and fired a, uh, a missile at me. So when I got this missile launch notification I thought it was from the leader not from the wingman. And what was going on is the wingman is providing nice cover out of that flank there to, pr pr to protect the leader as the leader pushes on Master J. The, le the uh, F-14 leader here is going to fire on Master J from 22 nautical miles and that missile, the second one, is already coming at me. I fired off my AMRAM at a much larger distance than I would have liked. Um, I think it was around 30 something nautical. And then I had to, yeah, 22. At launch, it was 27. So 27 nautical, that's kind of too far for an AMRAM to hit a target reliably. But uh, due to this missile launch, I was forced defensive, and I'm going to dive, and I'm going to dive into the dense air to try to get away and try to stay within this mountain range so that I can get cover. I don't want to come over here where it's flat terrain, right? So that wingman is providing solid cover. He's pushed me off the wingman, off the leader, and this allows the leader to comfortably get off a Phoenix missile at Master J. That AMRAM, if he does anything, it won't hit him, so he shouldn't be too worried about this one. Um, you can see now the wingman has forced me defensive. Master J has gone defensive as well. I'm totally cold, which means I'm a no factor at this point to, to the two of them. Uh, no factor means I'm basically no threat at all whatsoever. As long as that missile is keeping me uh, defensive, I'm not going to be able to do anything. Master J goes defensive, but he seems to misjudge the distance of the Phoenix, and he turns back in, and if Phoenix ends up hitting him, at Mach 2. <laughs> Mach 2 to the face. Alright, however he does manage to get off an A120 at what appears to be the wingman. Alright, uh, my AMRAM you can see is completely useless at this point. This is Master J's first AMRAM launch here. You can see that F-14 defending it. It's got no energy, it's gonna go right over the top. And my AMRAM is completely useless over here. And so over here, let's look at me. I went defensive, the missile followed me down. Here I come about a thousand feet from that missile hitting me, but it just doesn't have enough energy. Okay, so now I'm good, except what happens here is he realizes that that missile is probably not going to be a threat and he fires off a second one to continue to force me defensive, right? So right here, right as I was about to turn back in, I get a second missile launch and I have to defend again. And now this is where I look back. I look back out of the cockpit and I saw the launch. I saw the contrail of the launch here, the, the rocket smoke. And at that point I realized that I was too close to be going cold. You know, you don't want to be like the speed on this thing. Look at that, Mach 3.5, man. And the distance is what? Five nautical miles. You know, this is bad. This is very bad. And I realized that when I looked out the window. And the reality was I didn't have a lot of time. At this distance, you have to notch. If you don't notch, you're going to die. Or you got to get behind a mountain or something. And I was able to do neither one of those things due to the distance. I kind of freaked out a little. By the time I realized what was going on, it was already too late. It's four nautical away. So I was like, you know what, uh, the best thing I can do is try to escape it, which I knew was probably not going to work. Look at my speed, Mach 1. Look at the speed, Mach 3. You don't need to be a genius to realize that that missile is going to catch me. Bam. And that's how I died. So it looks like the Iranian F-14s win this round. Alright guys, so that was the video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you uh, had fun seeing me get murdered like that. I know I didn't have a lot of fun this round. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you next time.